Why did Picasso have many styles? It is because he was a pupil of Nietzsche. Nietzsche wrote an ex homo, considering that the multiplicity of inward states is exceptionally large in my case. I have many stylistic possibilities. The most multifarious art of style that has ever been at the disposal of one man. Good as any style that really communicates an inward state. Nobody ever was in a position to squander more new, unheard of artistic devices that had actually been created only for this purpose. Thus spoke Zarathustra was always full of instructions to change and overcome. Zarathustra said, I go new ways, a new speech has come to me. Like all creators, I have grown weary of the old tongues. My spirit no longer wants to walk on worn-out souls. Zarathustra said, Creation that is the great redemption from suffering and life seizement, but that the Creator may exist, that itself requires suffering and much transformation. Creator requires suffering and much transformation. Zarathustra said, Tomorrow he will have a new faith, and the day after tomorrow a newer one. He has a quick perception, as the people have, and a capricious temperament. Zarathustra said, I change too quickly. My today refutes my yesterday. When I ascend, I often jump over steps, and no step forgives me that. By the words of Nietzsche, the work of Picasso must be destroyed, too. Nietzsche said, But a mightier power and a new overcoming grow from out your values. Egg, an eggshell, break against them. Nietzsche said, Whatever I create, and however much I love it, soon I have to oppose it and my love. Thus will my will have it. Thus will my will of it. Nietzsche said, Truly, I have gone my way through a hundred souls, and through a hundred cradles and birth pangs. I had taken many departures. I know the heartbreaking last hours, but my creative will, my destiny, wants it so. Or, to speak more honestly, my will wants precisely such a destiny. I had taken many departures, I know the heartbreaking last hours. But my creative will, my destiny, wants it so. Or, to speak more honestly, my will wants precisely such a destiny. Nietzsche said, and life itself told me this secret. Behold, it said, I am that, which must overcome itself again and again. I am that which must overcome itself again and again. Change and overcome again and again. Nietzsche was double-edged sword. He Picasso became the painter who had to try every kind of style what he thought. He drew a picture like God freely. He couldn't help do as it. Zarathustra said, We're all becoming seem to me. The dancing of gods, and the wantonness of gods. I taught them all my art and aims, to compose into one, and bring together, what is fragment and riddle, and dreadful chance in man, is poet, reader of riddles, and redeemer of chance. I taught them to create the future, and to redeem by creating all that was past. Zarathustra said, And it is all my art and aim to compose into one, 
and bring together what is fragment and riddle and dreadful chance. Picasso said, An embodiment painting is never destructive. That's the one like a kind of pocket. The person who sees can put in all things he can think. This was also from Nietzsche. Nietzsche said, I am Zarathustra the godless. I cook every chance in my pot, and only when it is quite cooked do I welcome it as my food. That became his work, to combine mystery with mystery, and make further mystery. Picasso said to Francoise, I paint the way some people write their autobiography. The paintings, finished or not, are the pages of my journal, and as such they are valid. The future will choose the pages it prefers. It's not up to me to make the choice. I have the impression that time is speeding on past me more and more rapidly. I'm like a river that rolls on, dragging with it. The trees that grow too close to its banks are dead calves one might have thrown into it, or any kind of microbes. That develop in it. I carry all that along with me, and they go on. I have less and less time, and yet I have more and more to say, and what I have to say is increasingly. Furthermore, the metaphor that compares himself to the river is coming from Nietzsche. Zarathustra said, In truth, man is a polluted river. One must be a sea to receive a polluted river and not be defiled. He wanted to use the any words of Nietzsche because he was a Nietzsche believer and copycat of Nietzsche. Nietzsche wrote, God's woe is deeper, you strange world. Reach out for God's woe, nor for me. What am I? An intoxicated, sweet liar. A midnight liar. A croaking bell, which no one understands, but which has to speak before deaf people, you hire men. For you do not understand me. Nietzsche said, have a healthy mistrust today, you hire men, you stout-hearted, open-hearted men, and keep your reason secret. He Picasso could not help making a secret, because he was the single-minded Nietzsche believer, and faithful copycat of Nietzsche. However, when he concealed something, people were being attracted to the secret. This was not written in Nietzsche. 1907 After 1907, he has been called a genius painter. Anything what he made was called art. Olivier wrote, A great many people wanted to visit Picasso's studio. They all came together under his roof, the Austrians, the Germans and the Swedes, who were often more intelligent and genuinely sensitive to art, saw in his new technique deep philosophical meanings, such as it never possessed in any comprehensive way. They would argue with the artist to the point, sometimes of boring him to death, though actually, he was always irritated by people who insisted on making him explain his intentions in words. Nietzsche wrote, Why? said Zarathustra. You ask why? 
I am not one of those who may be questioned about their why. Furthermore, he Picasso despised and ridiculed people who praised him. Why? Nietzsche wrote, I see you stung by poisonous flies. They want blood from you, in all innocence. Their bloodless souls thirst for blood, and therefore, they sting in all innocence. Nietzsche also said, They buzz around you, even with their praise and their praise is importunity. They want to be near your skin and your blood. They flatter you, as if you were a god or a devil. They whine before you, as before a god or a devil. They think about you, a great deal with their narrow souls. You are always suspicious to them. Everything that is thought about a great deal is finally thought suspicious. Your neighbors will always be poisonous flies. That about you which is great, that itself must make them more poisonous, and ever more fly-like. This was what happened actually, around him. He was praised. There were many people who praised him. He was called greatest painter, genius painter. I understand that Picasso suffered. Nietzsche wrote, Flee, my friend, into your solitude. I see you stung by poisonous flies. Flee to where? There are rough breeze blows. Flee into your solitude. You have lived. Too near the small and the pitiable men. Flee from their hidden vengeance. Towards you. They are nothing but vengeance. No longer lift your arm against them. They are innumerable. And it is not your fate. To be a fly swat. And it is not your fate. To be a fly swat. Genevieve Laporte wrote Picasso's words. Understand. That's just it. Since when has a painting been a mathematical demonstration? Paintings aren't supposed to explain. Explain what? I wondered. I understand that Picasso suffered. Andre Malraux wrote Picasso's words. Down with style. Does God have a style? He made the guitar, the harlequin, the dog's hund, the cat, the owl, the dove. Like me. The elephant and the whale, fine. But the elephant and the squirrel. A real hodgepodge. He made what doesn't exist. So did I. He even made paint. So did I. A real hodgepodge. He made what doesn't exist. So did I. He even made paint. So did I. I understand that Picasso suffered. Picasso said. They should put out the eyes of painters, as they do to goldfinches. To make them sing better. This was not his original, too. We can discover an original Linnichi. Zarathustra said, I do not want to be light for these men of the present, or be called light by them. These men, I want to blind, lightning of my wisdom. Put out their eyes. Put out their eyes. He wanted to use the any words of Nietzsche, because he was a single-minded Nietzsche believer, and copycat of Nietzsche. I understand that Picasso suffered. Nietzsche said, Believe me, my friends, stings of conscience teach one sting. 
I understand that Picasso suffered. Nineteen thirty nine. France prohibited the exhibition of the photograph, which his hand grasped a paintbrush in. It was considered as a state secret. He was called a famous artist, and then he knew that he had become a statue. Nietzsche said, You respect me, but how if one day your respect should tumble? Take care that a falling statue does not strike you dead. The statue had the fate of being knocked down sooner or later. In Nietzsche, he really believed that the people who praised him may knock down him someday. He had to be frightened by it. Then he always needed a new style, not to be defeated. Nietzsche wrote an ex homo. Zarathustra created this most calamitous error, morality. Consequently, he must also be the first to recognize it. Not only has he more experience in this matter, for a longer time, than any other thinker after all. He drew the picture which people could not understand. He must not give people grounds of an argument. He was a man whom had always to be changed by fear that he was exposed. Picasso said, In old days, the painting was always accumulation of the revisions. But, in the case of me, the painting is accumulation of the destructions. I draw a picture, and then spoil it. Nietzsche wrote, He had too many failures. The spotter, who had not learned his craft, but that he took vengeance on his pots and creations, because they had turned out badly. He Picasso revenged the picture by destroying the picture. Here is a similar parable. Nietzsche wrote about the woman and broken marriage. Zarathustra said, A woman said to me, True, I broke up my marriage, but first, my marriage broke me up. Let's try to apply this parable. In the case of Picasso. In the case of Picasso. True, he, Picasso broke up his pictures, but first, his pictures broke him up. This was his excuse. And here, strange and ironical situation occurred. When he destroyed a picture, many people, sightless people called them as an art and praised him. And they called him as a genius painter. It was too foolish. However, it happened really. And this case didn't trot in Nietzsche. In addition, Picasso said, the painting was accumulation of the revisions. The painting is accumulation of the destructions. These were also Nietzsche's words too again. At part one of The Pale Criminal, Nietzsche wrote, What is this man? A heap of disease. Picasso said to Genevieve Laporte, I didn't want celebrity. I am too fond of hardship. That's why I have painted heads with their noses put on crooked. Just to disgust people. But nothing doing. They have found them beautiful. Though the most attractive are sometimes the most terrible. If only they could see. The words of Nietzsche might have let him feel relieved a little.
Zarathustra said. In the world, even the best things are worthless apart from him, who first presents them. People call these presenters great men. The people have little idea of greatness, that is to say, creativeness. But they have a taste for all presenters, and actors of great things. The world revolves about the inventor of new values. Imperceptibly it revolves. But the people and the glory revolve around the actor, that is the way of the world. The actor possesses spirit but little conscience of the spirit. He always believes in that with which he most powerfully produces belief produces belief in himself. A truth that penetrates only sensitive ears, he calls a lie and a thing of nothing. Truly, he believes only in gods who make a great noise in the world. The marketplace is full of solemn buffoons, and the people boast of their great men. These are their heroes of the hour. He, Picasso had become the great men whom Nietzsche said. Nietzsche called them, their heroes of the hour, and solemn buffoons. Both were right he, Picasso. Nietzsche wrote, Have a healthy mistrust today, you hire men. You stout-hearted open-hearted men, and keep your reason secret. For this present belongs to the mob. Who could overturn with reasons? What the mob has once learned to believe, without reasons. In this case, mob meant sightless people. He was a man who left the fate to Nietzsche by copying Nietzsche, he became a successful person by copying Nietzsche. It meant he could not help ruining by Nietzsche. He was a believer of Nietzsche through life, and he became a puppet of Nietzsche. Puppet had no own will. Now the puppet feared cutting of the string. In the new chapter, let's see the fate of the person who copied Nietzsche and became a complete puppet of Nietzsche. Please go to watch the next part.